Hi, welcome to the custom uh, this custom track tutorial. Uh, today we are going to be making light maps uh, and baking them into textures that you are going to be able to see in game. And uh, here's something, which what it would look like in game. Right, cool. So with that out of the way, let's see. You have a model, and you want to uh, just briefly go shift uh, tilde to fly around your model, and shift to go up, scroll the mouse wheel to move around. And yeah, this is more or less what our model looks like. Uh, one thing that you're going to want to make sure that's correct on all of your faces is the face orientation. We want everything to be blue, um, as this is the way that we're actually going to take light in. And then, uh, yeah, you can see on the back side of faces is obviously red. Um, and so that's not going to receive any lighting information. And so this fence would, if we applied a light map to it, would only get the lighting contribution from this side on the right here. Okay, and uh, uh, we also have this pool, and right now there's a placeholder water, and let's say we want this water to be transparent, but we still, like, tr or translucent, but we still want it to have it show up in render. So what we're going to do for this specific object is we are going to go into the shading tab, we're going to... Uh, click on this and if this was uh, sorry we're going to click on the pool and if it was part of the larger object control J uh, then the way we'd select this specific material in the materials property is uh, you know you could either look through it here find where is water where is water or what you could do is you could just uh, select that face uh, in edit mode and then we go to our water and you can see here um, that right now we have I, I have it called rocks because this was uh, that this specific texture was uh, for demonstration purposes only uh, taken from Zachi's Forest of Magic, uh, but we also can have the alpha. We so right now there's there's a certain alpha to this, and on most materials like bricks, it's it's one. There's there's no alpha coming through. Uh, uh, and right now it's about halfway um, transparent. You can't see this because right now we are in solid uh, viewport shading, we're in flat, and we're on texture. Uh, if you wanted to see it, we could also uh, select the material preview, excuse me, and this allows us to see actual transparency, but that's about it that this allows us to see. The other option would be Eevee and, or Cycles, uh, so at least the rendering tab. And then if you switch to our render properties, you get to choose between EV and cycles, and EV is a lot more convenient to work around with. So you can see as we adjust the alpha, we get more or less um, alpha. And uh, similarly for this um, fence here, we can, uh, uh, right now we're just plugging the alpha of the texture into the alpha of the material. So it knows yeah where, where to bake and whatnot. Uh, the thing that we're also going to have to set up for these materials uh, are included in the uh, material properties panel and down at the bottom here we have our uh, blend mode which uh, we want this to be alpha clipped for uh, transparent materials and for translucent materials we're going to have it as alpha hashed or alpha blend um, yeah depending on uh, there's there's minor differences on how these are calculated but alpha and hashed and alpha blender are pretty similar um, alpha clip is going to give us the binary, either it's transparent or it's not transparent, which is not what we want. Uh, in this specific case, and the last texture, uh, the last material thing that you might have to change is if you want, hey, I want this lava over here to be uh, emitting, emitting color. Like this is lava and I want it to be emitting color. Right now in Eevee, this does not show up. This is why EV is not as good. Uh, well, it, it's not as good as in this context because it's not showing the correct emission. Um, and cycles does show the emission. And so for this emission, uh, we simply have this emission color here and the emission strength here, which if you look at a default material is usually black um, and it doesn't show up. Yeah, um, cool. So now I'm going to go back into Eevee so I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, and now let's talk about these lights. So these lights, uh, you can see there's a, uh, this is our sunlight. So all it calculates, it doesn't calculate where the sun is. All it calculates is the direction. 
So I can rotate this around and we see we get different different lighting scenarios. Cool. We have our point lights and you can change this up to change the strength of this in the object data properties. The same thing for the sun is in the light properties. And we have the color here and the strength and the color and the strength. Right now this is set to five watts. Uh, this is a really smallly scaled model. Uh, and so, yeah, my lights are going to be have low wattage. Um, but if you have like a normal Mario Kart Wii track, you might even have to go up to 10 megawatts or something. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, and I think the more, sorry, the, the bigger your radius is, uh, which you can change here, the more diffuse it is and the more concentrated on a specific area or, yeah, diffuse. Um, cool. And uh, are there any last setup um, for this scene. No, I just added a bunch of area lights down at the bottom here. You can see that this uh, is going to be really like overexposed here. We'll fix that in correction. Uh, basically, it's, it's too bright. And so how do we know if a light is too bright in our scene or not? How do we know if our lighting is too dark in general or not? So the way we check that is we go into our um, into our material pro render properties and we say Okay, so your default is exposure one, so this is this is what it might look like. And you say, well actually that, that might be a bit dark, but I, I'm not sure. So what we can do is we can go view transform and we can change it to false color. And uh, this is this is on the um, this is on the too dark side of life. Uh, and you can also see like right now it's not calculating their stuff here, and that's because again the cycles, so now it's actually calculating, oh there should be light here. Um, but uh, that's that's an aside, and so we can say, well, actually, I probably want this all just a bit brighter, uh, and I'll I'll change that in the exposure um, because I'm lazy. But in general, this is, um, yeah, you want it to be more on the uh, more on this side of life um, at the back. But you can change the exposure to something like 2.4, and now we see, oh hey, this is what we want. This is on the green side of life. Uh, and this white is overexposed, um, but we can we can fix that, no problem. So we've set up our lights, we've set up our scene correctly, now we actually want to bake. So this is the cool part. So this is where we say, okay, so now every material that I want has to be uh, either a light map or a no light map. So uh, I've already done some of this. Let me go to layout mode. Uh, so every material that I have has to have a light map attached to it or no light map attached to it. You know, because not everything has to have a light map or should have a light map. So uh, basically what I did is I just went, I separated all by material, uh, a, you know, A, control J to join and then tab P separate by selection. Uh, so I guess uh, A, control J and then tab, you know, tab A, P separate by material. Cool. I guess, yeah, not selection material. So uh, I have this light map and I have currently, I have these joined as part of it. So uh, basically, hold on, I'm gonna actually, I'm just gonna do this. So I say, this is my water. Well, actually I don't want that to have a water so, or I don't want this to have a light map. So I'm just gonna call it, you know, NLM light map water. And I say, well, this is a, this should have a light map. So we'll just call it light map. This should have a light map, so that will get a light map. This will get a light map. This will get a light map. The material names are not important. The main thing is just whether it's designated as light map or not light map. So that way, when you ultimately join them together again later, you know what should be what should be joined all into one material. And it looks like um, this is all correct. And then we have no light map. This emission thing here, the fence thing here, the void here, the void on here and the water here. Cool. So now all of our light mapped objects, we are going to want to put into one object. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to select one of these and then I'm going to shift, so, uh, control shift select up to here and then I'm going to control J. So now they are all, all the light mapped objects are part of one thing here and uh, one object here and they have all the materials in here. And the reason we want to do this is because we want to assign these a UV map all at the same time. So uh, let's do that, I guess. So we've now created a light map. Ta-da! No, we haven't. We've created a UV map. And so to, okay, now 
we say, okay, well, what does our UV map? So we go over to the UV editing tab, and it looks exactly the same as, you know, we just copied. This is what this does. It adds the UV map, and it copies over what we had previously. However, the nice thing is, is now we can say, well, hey, let me give it different UVs. And so now it tries a different thing. Uh, so that was UU, but I can also use UC, uh, UC, and that's going to cube project, and that's going to get something different. You can see I already have a texture back here for where I tried baking a light map earlier. Um, cool, but you'll also notice that, oh hey, some of these, you know, that UV shares the same, shares the same as, as, as you know, this. So then when I have this texture information, you know, that's, that's what we're doing is we're, we're applying this texture here to each UV here. And now there's going to be multiple things that are all trying to share the same. And that's not what we want. We don't want all of these disparate and separate. So um, what we can do is we can, yeah, use our default cube project. Sure, why not? Uh, eh, let's see if a default, oh, that actually did pretty well. Not bad. Cool. So uh, just a UU worked, um, just standard unwrap. However, uh, this this is our magic. This is our magic. We can also man try manly unwrapping. So you can say, well, actually, I want all of these to be uh, as part of one. Uh, uh, and I'll go into top view, and I'll go UV, and now they're all part of one thing here. Or w w yeah, one UV thing here, and uh, that might be that might be better for what you want. Um, so there's no actual visible, you know, there's no seams along here. Whereas in our other method, if we look, they're all sp spread out and disparate, which is maybe not what we want. You know, maybe I want these faces here to actually share the same exact lighting information there and not have any extra problems. Uh, this is because of bad geometry. If you, this is the, this is where the true power of having good modeling comes in is uh, light mapping and uh, vertex colors, which you can check my vertex colors tutorial. Ha ha, I just, I just got you. Isn't that what business people say? So UV packer, right. I, ha I pu pulled that up to tease it. Uh, here it is, uh, uvpacker.com, download free. And uh, there's an installation process and it's uh, not trivial, but it's, uh, well, it's it's pretty trivial. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it, it, it's, it's, it's not, uh, download it and you have it it's there's more than one step into it anyways we pack and we say maybe a 1024 by 1024 sure why not and so we get something that looks like this so now our you know all of these are trying to map to this cool we can see that there's still some weird stuff happening in there ah you know that that maybe looks a a bit really messy here um and so what we can uh, what we can do is say well actually what do these correspond to uh and to do this, I have UV sync selection enabled. And so this way I can uh, select L to select linked. And then I can go into my space here and see, oh, that's the default unwrapping of the uh, monkey. Well, maybe I don't want that as one object. So let me try to, uh, let's see, what would, let's try a smart UV project. So that tries to really cut it all up. What if I, so the yeah this this is why you should have good um like seams already but uh in our case it won't matter too much I almost wonder like if I could cut it along here ah I'll just be lazy uh let's try a a cube project is always gonna is always gonna work to some degree um and then we can just use our um select this again uh L to select linked. Uh, sorry, well, we can also just go in here, now select link, and it shows up in the UV space. And you can see in our light map packer, right now we have rescale UV charts off. That's notable. And the reason why that's notable is if I want, went here and then selected all and tried to pack, what's going to happen is that this monkey is now going to take up basically all of the texture space. Whereas if I collapse it down here and then pack again, you can see this monkey is now taking very little of the texture space. And so that's a trade-off to make, um, depending on how, um, like, what's this? Well, that's that's the roof, and maybe you won't be looking at the roof a whole lot. Let's scale that down. Um, you know, what's, what's this? Oh, that. 
you know, maybe I do want that. Uh, you can also go into face like mode, that's gonna be nicer. And so, uh, yeah, you can just fill around with how much UV space does, does everything get. Um, and you can say, well, actually, uh, I want, what section do I want scaled up? Yeah, that's a main road, and you're gonna see that often. That's a main road, that's some sort of, that's gonna have a mission, and now let's try packing this. Cool. And where you can also increase the padding between these. So you can see there's right now texture, like pixels associated at each space, and there's a uh, distance between each UV island. And so the more distance you have between those like this, this is the padding between those. Um, yeah, and you can increase the padding amount uh, and that will space them all out more. Um, cool. Uh, let's see. I talked about UV packing. Uh, I talked about separating them out. Uh, one thing uh, before we bake that you want to check is are is all your smoothness of each material correct? So you can say, well, I want to uh, everything uh, that's right now associated in this light map. I want to automatically smooth it. So I or automatically smooth it if it's at a certain angle or less. So basically, these 90 degree um, differences here, these will get, um, what do you call, uh, sharp lighting. So it's not gonna try to blend the lighting nicely between these faces. Whereas this, it's like, well, actually these are part of the same, these are part of the same, like there should not be a sharp line here. They should smoothly interp interpolate the lighting between these. And so this is what AutoSmooth will do for you. Um, you might also have to it is possible, um, not likely, but it is possible, here we go, that you would have to click, uh, clear custom split normals data. Um, yeah, excuse me, uh, I've had that issue once and uh, so has Bugsy in the community. Um, yeah, anyways, so now we have our light map, our, our UV for our light map, and now really we can just bake. So we have our, our light set up, we have our UV, and the one last thing before we bake, because I just remembered this, is, and this is the most important part, is you need to have in each material here, so I'm just gonna, we're, you know, we're selecting our light map uh, object, and we're gonna select the first material, and then we're gonna say, I want to add, or let me just add the, I like the back wall, yeah, because it's nice and big and you can see it. Um, cool, and I'm gonna actually go into, uh, EV and I'm going to, right now we're still in false color mode, which I, I go change in my material properties. And I go into standard or filmic. Cool, um, and so EV I can actually see things and that's because it's reading uh, the information from uh, from this, uh, from our principled BSDF, uh, whereas our UV information that we chose here is using UV map 001, which is not currently a the active, uh, thing for rendering, but I, I could change that if I wanted to. Cool. Uh, so yeah, right now it's also UV, using the UV space of that. So I'm going to Control C, Control V. Um, I could also, I think, Shifty. Let's see, Shifty. Yeah, that's that's really what you want to do. Um, Shifty, and you're like, wow, I just duplicated a wall texture. The trick is, though, I can get a new texture. Sorry, let me explain what I did there. I uh, X'd out of the previous texture here, and then I said, actually, I want to create a new texture, and I'm gonna call it light map, and I'm gonna call this two because I already have a light map. Let's just call it TL, um, and I'm gonna make this 1024 by 1024, which is the eh, which is the largest size that the Wii can really handle, and uh, the trick is, yeah, there's, there's some computational stuff that I, I'm not gonna mention here because it's a long tangent, but essentially, a 1024 by 1024, like the large textures, is good. Um, color black as a default background is fine, and um, that's what we want. And you want to uncheck alpha because we're not going to, we are not going to be using that channel. And we're also going to change this to a to our UV map that we just created. Now, we want this to be selected, but not have it dragged into the base color. We want this new light map to be cr selected, but not connected. And now we want to basically control C and go into our next material and uh, do that for, for all of these, which is um, 
painful, yes. Um, and you'll see that it's now automatically selected because it's white, which is actually pretty convenient. Um, yeah, and uh, this is what you do for each one. And now it knows that we're actually going, we have this texture selected. So now we're now actually at the point where we want to bake. And so now when we bake, it's going to bake onto this texture. So only cycles supports baking. Um, you want to be GPU if you have it. Um, my computer is a bit silly. We are going to um, say we're going to be testing. So for testing, we want our noise uh, max samples to be 60 or something low, uh, like 64 uh, powers of two are, are cool. Um, yeah, I usually go at like 2048 for baking. Um, though you could probably get it with 1024 for baking. It depends on. Um, and then you also want denoise on, but only for testing uh, because it makes it look so much nicer and realistic, uh, but it, it also creates uh, artifacts between uh, faces, which is not realistic. Uh, goodness, I'm trying not to say ah, uh, and then like, okay, goodness. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, denoise on for testing, not for proper baking. And uh, the light paths, you can get rid of. Uh, although in this case, we do have transparent uh, bounces. Transmission, uh, we don't have... Uh, that's like glass stuff, isn't it? Yeah, so I, um, I'll just put it down to four. Yeah. You know, I should know what these are. Uh, we're not going to need caustics. Um, and um, although you can leave it at one, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, when in doubt, just leave it as is for baking is, is totally fine. So now, this this is the key. This is the key. So, right, I changed my exposure. So this is what it looks at like at the default exposure. However, by the false color, we determined that okay, this actually is going to be maybe too dark. So let's try um, Filmic and let's maybe put this at 2.4. And uh, now we said, oh, hey, that actually looks looks more correct. Cool. So we changed the exposure and in our baking options, we want, remember, we have to have this material select or this texture selected and we're now going to bake and we want to bake all of the indirect lighting, all of the lighting from these lights, we are now going to bake without the diffuse. If you do the diffuse, it also tries to take the texture that's currently on here and tries to contribute that onto the texture, which leads to some weird stuff and uh, is frustrating. Uh, but yeah, diffuse off and we want to bake the combined, everything together. So we could just do like, oh, what's the, uh, Oh, what's the shadow? You know, what's the ambient occlusion uh, pass? What's the normal pass? And that's how you get like actual baking of geometry and stuff as normal baking, or you can like textures with like specific uh, bumpiness or what have you. Um, but we're just gonna do combined. And honestly, at this point we can just hit bake and we get a circular dependency because I might've done something wrong. And it says it's from Ellen Brick. Uh, well, that's this brick. Let's see, did I do anything wrong? Um, that's it's usually an indication that I did something wrong. Um, oh, I'm going to guess. I have a guess. I have a guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not even It's not even 1024 by 1024. So uh, I'm going to guess that I had like both of these selected. Yeah, I had both of those selected. I really just wanted this one selected. Okay, lesson learned. See, this is, this is why you never experiment, like, ever, because then things go wrong, and then it's painful, and, and then you never learn, which, you know, okay. Uh, I'm trying to think, did I do anything wrong? Uh, I don't think so, because it's all using the UV maps user one. All right, let's try it again. This is also the nice thing about using, um, oh goodness, we need to go up to here and here. Uh, this is, aha, we didn't get circular dependency. So this is also the nice thing of using small bakes is that if, when something goes wrong, you catch it early and often, and you get to change a bunch of lighting stuff. You can also say, hey, I want these lights 
and I want them to look radically different. And you just make one version with radically different lights. And then you bake that and you just like get to compare and contrast. So, cool. So now we have a baking image, a baked image. So we go to our UV editing tab and we can see, hey, that's not our image. And you're right. And that's because I'm not currently looking at the correct one. So to change what you're looking at in the background, you hit this uh, picture thing here and you find wherever you put your light map, which in my case is called TL. Cool, so now this is the, um, this is the, this thing and uh, this looks all weird and wrong because we are currently uh, in solid mode. Or actually, well, it's because we haven't ex ex uh, applied our exposure, but actually this looks correct. Um, it could also look wrong, in which case you might be looking at something like this, where you're seeing uh, some of the light map texture with different UVs, but sometimes the normal texture. And that's just because some of these materials, you are using UV map one, and some of them you're actually looking at the base material, or what do you have plugged into the material node? Um, so let's actually look at what's this specific, um, the sidewalls. Now let's look into the shading tab and let's go into the material preview and look at, look at the reason for why this is looking less normal. Um, oh, it's because right now it looks like for my old one, I actually managed to bake, uh, incorrectly onto this texture here, which is not what I wanted. So I need to... Actually, ooh, I wonder if it overwrote or not. No, it didn't. Okay, well that's good. Cool. Really, so there was more of that. Ah, interesting. Uh, Legend of Zelda's ceiling. Cool. That's what the circular warning was telling me about, is you have made a grave mistake, go back. Um, and, let's see, monkey. And uh, monkey and the skull. Cool. Really? Did I do all of these wrong? I'm so confused. Maybe I didn't. Huh? All right. You learn something new every day, or something. Um. That looks plausible. Is there anything else? I, at this point, do we just? Look through, look through each one of these. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna say we're. Yeah, goodness, wow. I feel like I'm gaslighting myself. Um, what am I looking for? Oh, that looks cool. Does it tile? Not tiles. Oh, it tiles too much. Okay. Um, we can pick a different texture for this. I'm now rambling again and wasting wasting time. Cool. Nice, this is what I do. This is what I do, I, I ramble. Um, and let's just find the title and get back to actually making progress. Um, well, that's not the title. Ah, here we go, okay, cool. Right, so now everything is back to normal. Um, where was I? I was saying shading and light map texture and UV editing. Aha, here we go, okay, yes, cool. So right now we have uh, this. We have this. And what does it correspond to? It corresponds to a um, thing along here. So basically this is going to be really bright and white. And where is this? Right next to the um, torch here. Well, on the side of the torch is going to be pretty dark. Let's see. What about that face? Uh, we can try to... Yeah. So even that's not, not really bright, even though there should be a you know, a light right about here that's casting light right on there. So, um, basically this is going to be really overexposed and we're going to have to manually fix that using texture painting, but that's, that's cool. Um, it's also really dark right now. Anything that is white is going to be multiplied by the, so in our shader setup that we're going to have, anything white is going to be multiplied by our base texture and then, uh, like a value of white is a value of one, and so our base value of texture is not going to change. However, we're also going to multiply by two. So realistically, middle value of gray is our new, like the same color as the texture, like it looks now currently. Anything that's going to be pure white 
is going to be two times the texture, which might start clipping uh, and which might start looking bad. Um, yeah, so you just, this is the whole thing about dynamic range and uh, read if you could read if I read, could you give you a good uh, breakdown on a, uh, HDR stuff and you can bake to texture. Bugsy can probably also help you there as well. Um, but yeah, this is where we can also mess with the exposure. And this is a good place to mention that is in our, uh, where do we have it? our material properties, our baking properties, we set our color management and we changed the exposure on here. However, we don't see this reflected in the texture yet until we save as and we save it as a render, and that's key. So now we save as the image, and we don't see anything because we need to go back into our shading tab, we need to replace the TL with the TL that we saved out over here, and now we go back into the UV editing tab, and we can see, oh hey, this is a lot brighter than it was before. Oh hey, these are really white now. Um, honestly, I could probably just, you know, take this image, put it in Photoshop, and uh, start uh, manipulating it to be even more exposed. Cool, but that's not what we're working on right now. Right now we're saying, okay, we have our light map texture. How do we actually see what it looks like in Blender without having it, having to look at it in game and make sure that it just, you know, happens to work. Okay, I'm also going to change my exposure back to one because there have been, uh, at least currently, uh, or at least the a recent version of Free Studio, um, the exposure exporter has, um, er, there's a problems exporting the PNGs if your exposure is not one, that's probably been fixed by this, uh, yeah, that might have been fixed, it's probably been fixed, I know it's at least been fixed in the, in one, exp the Gabriella's um, ReStudio BRES pl uh, plugin, so you can file export as BRES, um, which is, oh, maybe I don't have it downloaded on here, but uh, at least, yeah, through Gabby's um, plugin, you can um, export 3Studio um, as a BRS. Cool, but I um, tend to export as a DAE and then load it in ReStudio, the program, um, not using the plugin. Um, sorry, where was I? I was, um, sorry, brain, uh, brain, function, please, help brain uh well at least we can see it and it like looks looks sort of good hold on um oh yeah i'm trying to see how does it look in game without going to like solid view or if i just want to look at it if i just want yeah solid texture how do i see both the lighting and the um and the texture at the same time so i'm going to go out into the shading editor and right now uh here we go okay so you can see if I select this versus if I select that, we're seeing different things, right? Um, which is not a surprise. What I'm going to do, Shift A to add a node, S to search, um, and then I'm going to do a vector and a vector math. And I want to multiply these two textures together. So I'm going to multiply these two textures together. And then I also want to multiply uh, what? What happens if I alt click and drag? Alt right click and drag. Yeah, there we go, it works. Uh, this is if you have the Node Wrangler add on installed, which you edit preferences and it comes by default with Blender. Very useful. Alt right click. Um, G to grab with nodes. I think I. No, I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Um, so we multiply these two together and we also want to vector math multiply by two. I don't know if it is technically component wise. Um, but we can do this, do this, and plug it into the plug it into the base color here. So now, when we look at the, I guess it wouldn't be solid; it would be material preview. And this is how we see the um, see this. And right now, I'm trying to figure out what did I mess up. Um, I'm almost wondering. Oh, because right now we're adding it by two, which of course is not going to do what we want. And so we multiply by two. If we multiply by four, yeah, now it looks now it looks actually more more like it. Uh, and you can also see well, what happens if we change the exposure here? So I don't think there's a random exposure thing. But if we just like what happens if we multiply it vector math 
like multiplied the light map texture by by two. What happens if we multiply the light map by two? Oh hey, we started getting some stuff. You know, and then this is what your shader would would start to uh yeah, would would start to do. Um or like maybe we want we want to see this, how that how this looks. So just to repeat the process one more time, we have our light map texture here that we've baked onto here. And remember, if we want to rebake, we're going to have to select this again. And shift a uh, vector math and multiply. I'm pretty sure Gabby's plugin also sets up these nodes already, but um, I have not worked worked with that yet. Vector math um, here for and uh, Did the, oh, I forgot to change it to multiply. That's what it did. And shift a uh, vector math and multiply by two. And so this this is looking like, actually our, our thing might still be underexposed. Um, I wonder why this isn't clipping over. Hmm. Oh no. So it's not going to look quite like it does in game, but at least gives you some general idea of how this will look. Uh, and one thing you want to do to remove this reflection from the background is to change the specularity down to zero. Aha, uh -huh. here's, here's what it's really going to look like. Uh, we're going to change the specularity down to zero. There we go. Now we're seeing stuff as it looks in game. Uh, change the specularity of this down to zero. Nice. Good. And so this is yeah, something approximating what it would what it would look like in game. So we have our light map. We have our uh, if we're rebaking, we always want to have the selected. I think I said that. Uh, and now we want to actually export this. And to export this, what we're going to do is we are going to tab a P by material. You know, save this as you will. And uh, realistically, we have. Oh, we also want to remove these nodes. Um, you could, uh, I guess you could keep these nodes, um, although what it what uh, ReStudio is going to do, or Brawl Crate, or w one of the two programs is going to do, is it's not going to interpret what this should be, and so it's not going to apply any default shader, which is uh, okay, because we're going to have to set it up ourselves anyways. Um, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. I'm just going to do it, um, because I because I don't experiment and I, I <laughs> um, I'm not good at this. Uh, but we have our, our color and color. And so now it looks like this. We have, oh yes, one thing. Very, very crucially important. Save, image, save. Oh, I guess we did. But anytime you, you make changes, you always want to save. And right now I have still a very rough light map. Uh, I could go higher, and then the the next thing that I would want to do if I was uh, to actually start editing this. Actually, let's let's do that before we before we get onto this. We can see if you go into texture painting mode, which is now where we want to be. And I say I want to select this, and I want. Uh, um. Sorry, I'm losing my turn of thought. Um, where am I? So I'm saying I want to be the texture painting, and I have this. So uh, we also want to put the light map back here. There we go. So now you can see if I draw in here, what will happen? You might not see it here because I'm not in the right mode. Oh yes, I'm not using the correct UV map, but that's not being rendered. Let's see. How do I want? Where? What's it currently using? So I guess let's not have that. Oh yes, there it is. We saw it. Did we? Hello. Ah, there we go. So we have stuff now. Um, and likewise, if you draw in here. Oh, I see. We're only we're only selecting a certain object. So this depends on what what object you have selected, which is why these should all be joined together as one object. Cool. And you should only separate them at the very end. Cool. Um or all the light mapped objects should be joined as one one thing until the very end. 
So let me do that. Control J. Cool. So now um, you can see all the UVs here. And if I was to draw on this, then we see changes on here. If I <laughs> if I draw on here, uh, texture painting mode. If I draw on here, I see changes over there. Cool. And now um, I want to actually, yeah, start start making changes based on what this looks like. And uh, I need to first go into object mode and tab into edit mode, and then see. Okay, why why is why does this look not correct? Well, this looks mildly correct. And so it's probably the way that I have these materials set up currently. And so I'll go into the shading tab and I'll say, well, actually, this is selected right now. Maybe I'll go into the same solid view. So I can say this is selected. And now if I go here, nothing's selected. And so that's why it doesn't know that it should be looking at this. So I'll say that should be selected. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, there we go. And uh, maybe that's most of it. That's selected, 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 cool. So now everything's, now we actually can see what we're trying to texture paint on, and we need to go flat, um, and yeah, flat is what it's going to look like, more or less in game. And I say, wow, actually, th there's still some color differential here. Why is that? Hmm, what happens if I do this? Well. That's where the textures, or that's where the painting is uh, happening between. So if I was like, huh, I wonder like where, if I want to blend this, right? I want to blend this. Okay, well, obviously that's not going to help me blend. So where are these UVs in the first place? So the fastest way I know how to do this is to change over to the, um, is to make this right now, right, uh, right now it's in the, uh, what do you call it? Image editor tab, but you can change to the UV editor, and then you can tab into edit mode here, see where these are in the UV sync. You can see, oh, hey, this is that and that, and then you know where they are. And then you have to change this back to an image editor and this back to a object. Cool. What you can do is you can say, I want to eye drop and say, I want that color. Oh, and maybe I want to mix these. And maybe I want this at a strength Right now, we are at a radius of 50. So you can see if I do this, it's actually basically completely overwriting at, at a strength of one. You, if I change up my radius, obviously I get a different result. And, oops, let's not have that. And uh, you can see if I have strength of very little, I get very little, aha, uh -huh. who would have guessed? Um, and uh, realistically, the only thing that you would edit would also be this fall off. And the way that this works, you can get more subtle blends between these. Even though I'm still at the strength of one, I'm getting a lot smoother of a um, transition from here to here. But obviously that's that's a one way, like we're taking the lighting from here and we're basically overwriting the lighting from here. What if I have lighting from here that I also wanna blend into here? Like it, it shouldn't just be one way. And so also what we can do is instead of saying blur, we can also try to, um, where is it? Uh, blur, we can also, uh, no, no, here it is. Ah, soften, there we go. So this takes these two and it softens them. That's really what we want. We want to soften all of these. Except uh, like soften and it works. Uh, except when it doesn't, you're like, man, I want to soften some more, soften more, soften more. Uh, and it, it doesn't really work well, but you can just say 10. Oh, hey, now we're really softening. Okay, that we were really soft with that. But you know, 1.5, just like casually soften this um, yeah and so you can always just go around basically literally softening everywhere um, oh one more thing if you're like man I want these to be these two to be soft but I don't want to edit anything else what you can do is you can say mask paint mask so now anything that is tabbed selected in edit mode 
will now be eligible to be painted on. I can't mix over here. I can't make any mistakes over here noticeably, or notably. Um, I can only now mix or draw in this, this area. Um, you can't do the same of, oh, I only want to do it in this area. Anywhere you put it, it will, it will happen. Cool. Um, and to, to not have that, you can always um, just deselect and then nothing will be selected and you have to turn off paint mask. Cool. So that's really texture painting, I think. So we, we put uh, edits onto here. Uh, so one thing we're going to do, so I pressed F uh, and that's how we get our cursor size up and down. There's also a key for this, but I don't remember it. Um, F is just the radius. Uh, I'm going to want to darken this. So I'm going to draw and I'm going to select I'm going to select a gray value, so saturation zero. I'm going to put it close to close to white, but not quite white. Actually, you know, what? I'll just take I'll just take this blue-ish. Yeah, actually, I'll just take this blue, and I'm just going to mix it on top with a very low strength, and uh, see how this goes. Yeah, and honestly, this is this is a good way to say that was oversaturated before. And now we're just making it less oversaturated. Cool. You can also try to say, well, um, this is what it looked like before. We can also say, I want to linear or darken. Uh, where is it? Uh, what am I trying to do? Oh my goodness. Sorry, this is. Uh, here's light and where's darken? Oh my god. Uh, we can say darken. And the nice thing about what this will do, so let me just take a really, some sort of dark thing and put it at strength one. So now everything will go to this value, but anything that's darker than that will not get darker. And likewise, you can compare, you can uh, pair both darken and lighten together. Uh, you know, maybe I'll darken here and then I'll now say, well, I'll now lighten up to here. And that will take these dark values and bring it all the way up to here. And so that's a that's a way of texture painting as well. Um, but usually this this mirror does a does a good job on its own. Cool. Uh, and I think, and you're like, well, I made changes. Now I want to save, and always just keep saving, just keep saving, keep saving. Uh, when you keep making edits to this texture, cool. Okay, I think that's the I think that's the light map. Like we made uh, texture editing. Oh, it looks like our monkey is right now not not doing so hot. Let's let's figure out what's going on here, buddy. Are you okay? What happened? What happened, buddy? Where are you on the UV map? Oh, you didn't get added to the UV map. How did that happen? You have a UV map. Did you not get unwrapped? Oh, you did. Um, right. So this is the we have to go to the UV editor and figure out what's going on. Why can we not see you? Oh, I know why. This is a mistake. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is a mistake. Yes, it is. But I it's a systematic mistake. I changed specular to zero. Or, yeah, from z uh, 0.5 to zero. So you didn't get any shininess. But now, actually, the light's not actually bouncing off of it. Which means that when we're actually doing our um, cycles thing, you can't act like nothing gets baked onto it. Which is a problem. Um... And so uh, the way you'd fix that is, well, this is why you do test bakes and you don't do texture painting until you're very certain that everything else has been done because I don't want to manually paint this. I could manually paint this, um, but basically you'd have to um, rebake this whole thing. I think you could probably get away with some separation and then uh, uh, rejoining of UVs later. But basically we say, well, actually, it's actually this will be pretty easy since we have everything everything's all set up like honestly we have our this light map texture selected we have what do you call it uh, that texture selected that texture selected that texture selected that texture selected we have our uh, we're going to change back up the exposure back to 2.4 and uh, you could also say, I want this to be high, you know, very high contrast or low contrast. Um, and then uh, you can just bake again. And it's because we have our UV map that's set up correctly. It's because we have our light map selected. You'll notice that our light map that we just spent a bunch of time texture painting, that's gone. Well, 
we'll, we'll save we'll save as right so UV editing uh, and here image save as save as TL2 um, save as render and we get um, if we go back out and go back or we need to open up TL2 maybe yeah 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 oh, this is this thing again where okay I've made changes and now I want to reference TL2 and I reference TL2 and oh no oh no oh no I changed all of the speculars to be zero I changed all the speculars to be zero oh I'm an idiot oh what an idiot okay well the specular has to be a 0.5 I, the specular has to be a 0.5 hold on one second give me a moment um, you can also change while I'm talking about things. You can change the roughness. Um, you can this this is um, like you can do it with ice uh, for Cosmic Grove whenever it releases. Uh, it has a very low roughness value, and it will it will now like bounce all over everywhere. And um, you know this is this is why they pay me the big bucks, right? Cool. Uh, and now I'm gonna bake again. Bake. Um, yeah, but basically that's how um, glassy like and or how rough an object is and how much light ab absorbs versus bounces back. Um, that's why it's called roughness. Obviously, great. Um, great talking point. I feel like there's more stuff I should be conveying that I know. Um, image, save as, TL2, save as render, save as, as image, and we go back to our shading, we change our TL to be a TL2, that looks a lot more promising, and ta-da, this is now what it looks like, and it looks a lot more red because we turned on high contrast. This is a um, thing from our denoiser, um, artifact from our denoiser, and honestly, I could go back and texture paint, but I showed you how to do that, so I don't feel the need to show you how to do that again. And now I'm going to um, now I'm going to export. So this is where I'd Control Shift S to make a to make a new one. Two, um, and this is where I'd take my light map objects and I'd separate by material and I'd save. And now I have each one as a separate material here, and. Uh, yeah, now I go and I file export as a DAE, and then I yeah, let's let's actually do this. File export DAE EL two. Nope. I want to export as a Autodesk DAE scale of one hundred, and export that. And now we say go into our Elysian layer, find our DAE, go into ReStudio, I'm not sure why I did that. Would I like to, would you like to? Would I like to? I don't know, would I like to? No. Open. Elysian layer. DAE. BRES. Cool, sure, cool. And since these are all in the same directory, it finds them automatically, except when my model is like really small, so um, it's not going to look nice or pretty. There we go. But we can see roughly. Cool. And uh, I'm just going to save this. Save. And now I'm going to open up the BRS with Brawl Crate because this is the workflow that I like to do. I've had problems with ReStudio um, and Brawl Crate. Just just does the things and I know how to do the things. Uh, so we have, right now, we have our material and you'll notice, oh hey, that's a, that's our light map, you know, texture. That's correct. So how do we get, how do we get to our other texture? Well, this is the texture coordinates and we want to choose the other texture coordinate except that it's the same and the reason there we go okay yeah that's that's what we want it to look like i was wondering okay that's just a 
brawl create bug yes that happens okay that's that's what it should look like cool so now those are all ma our materials so I'm gonna get this back wall and I want this to get you know right now it's using shader zero as uh, seen with the shader I want to have a new shader okay so I'm going to go up to here uh, and I'm going to create uh, whoa new asset shader cool so now this shader what's gonna happen I want it to take two texture references this swap table doesn't matter because what it's going to end up happening red swaps to red green swaps to green blue swaps to blue alpha swaps to alpha and we're going to in our texture here we say that we want swap zero um somewhere here or maybe it's here uh, or maybe it's maybe it's here <laughs> somewhere we specify swap zero ah where is it i don't know it doesn't matter because uh yeah, just the default's fine. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, swap zero. Uh, but if you want to make it grayscale, you could say, well, actually in these swap settings, I want everything to be mapped to the green channel, except for that alpha, and then I'd say swap two or whatnot. So I want texture enabled in this first stage, and I'm going to go here, right click, add a new stage. So our, our first thing is always going to, like our light map is going to be added last. Um, is always what we want. And then we want the first thing to have the first texture map. So the texture map, if we go to this blender, we have our texture map is, this is our first map, this is our second map. We, uh, yeah, and that, that holds true as the same in bulk rate. And um, we want to use the first, uh, sorry, the texture map is this texture. So you can have each material. So I'm gonna act actually add the new reference here so now I have, this is the second material, but this now has the first texture reference. Aha, see, this is now the light map. So now we want new reference to actually be our light map. So the way we do that is we ha need to add a new texture. So I'm gonna go up to here, import texture, and I'm going to go into Elysian layer, textures, and it's gonna be TL2 and uh, there we go. And 1024 by 1024, cool. And CMPR, yep, that's what we want. And for actually convenience, I'm just gonna call this new ref. So now every time when I just add, you know, oh, I want to add a new ref reference, it automatically knows that we're going into this into this light map. So now you can see, oh, hey, it's showing up there. Uh, we have our texture coordinate ones. One thing we can also do, not that I, I don't think this, I don't know if this matters for optimization purpose, but we can just say clamp, and that way we're not, we're very clearly not using um, this extra space out here or not. Um, I wonder if, ooh, you can have some like light maps, but with like MIP maps. That would be cool. Someone needs to do that. Sorry, I'm getting off track. Um, but yeah, so we're saying right now, this wall, this this light map, this shader stage will take uh, will take our textures, texture color, multiply it by our vertex colors, which is stored in the raster color. If you have any, you don't have to have any. Uh, if you don't have anything, it will still work. Uh, if you don't have rest like vertex colors and you don't want to just like bother about it, what you can do is say. Uh, so this shows you the formula. It's a linear interpolation between uh, A and B uh, by C, and we add on a bias of D. So B times C is your classic, I want to multiply these two things together. And it goes, yeah, C goes, or C is automatically set at zero, which means one minus zero is A. Hold on, am I being stupid? B times C is your classic, B times C. Yeah, 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 because then A is zero, and then, okay, goodness. Uh, but if you don't have raster color and don't want to bother about it, you can always just set texture color to be in your bias. Cool. And so now this is just going to put a texture color into output color. We don't have to worry about um, alpha because it's like this is going to be zero, and we're going to put zero into our output alpha. And then, except now, instead of just saying, well, there's our output, we say, we're gonna pipe this into a new stage. We're gonna take the first texture map. We're gonna take the first texture coordinates. Uh, and now we're going to say, 
that this is another way, you know, if, if you did have it, it would be from somewhere. Um, now we're going to say, we're going to take our output color. Aha, uh -huh. our output color that we got here. Or you could say this is actually mapped to color one, maybe, or color zero. Then we can say, we'll take what we got, the calculation from color zero, and multiply it by our texture color from this stage, which has the texture map one, which is our light map. So we're now multiplying it together, and we get a uh, multiply by two at the very end. Um, yeah, cool. If you did want to say, well, actually, I first want my light map to be exposed more, like multiplied by two, and then add it to the texture at the very end, you could say, uh, you know, swap these around for texture map one, texture map zero. Um, but it's also better to just do that in the like a proper paint.net and just change up, change around the exposure and gamma through there. Um, yeah, and we don't have to do anything here. And so now we've created our first shader and this now back wall should reference shader one. And that's it. Now we have active shader stages two and we have our two textures and uh, we have our light set index at negative one because that way we don't get um, weird brawl crate looking shading uh, on our materials and fog index at negative one because uh, we don't want to show fog. And um, so these colors, while I'm just talking about shaders in general, here you get a mini shader lesson while we're doing a light map tutorial. This is weird. Um, we have our shader color blocks and these uh, these are always constant. So if you try to plug in here, like you can't output to a constant color selection. But when you're saying, I want to maybe add some sort of extra little bias, you know, because I, you know, maybe I just want like an extra bias color, you know, applied to everything here, then I could say, well, I'll take constant color selection. And which one do I want to choose? I want to choose constant one, one or constant color zero RGB, and that converts it. Uh, and I forget what the, oh, I used to know what these, oh, that's divided, one divided by one, seven divided by eight. Uh, and I forget why you'd want that. Um, yeah, and you can say grayscale or just using alpha or whatnot. Cool. Um, oh, but yeah, the constant colors are constant and um, you could also have some indirect mapping and you you get to decide if you do want some indirect mapping then you want matrix zero to be on here you want uh this to be oh what is it this to be st bias to be stu and uh, maybe that's all you want Ma matrix zero and stu and that's how you get the uh, indirect texture stage. Oh, and then you obviously have to enable your texture map uh, zero and texture map one. Uh, yeah, cool. And you can have up to four indirect stages. Cool. Or at least in Brawl Crate. I'm not sure how many indirect, maybe only just one. Not sure. Someone knows. Uh, okay, so I've, wow, that was a lot of time talking. Save. Now, I have a BRS. Now, I'm going to go into no clip. Oh, yeah. Here's something that works well in all light maps. Ah, just do this. It's a transparent plane. That's all it is. And it looks so good. These are god rays. Uh, this is Zachy's haunted library. God rays. Use them. They're so good. Um, and you can also texture paint this specific area. Uh, now I'm going to drag and drop my BRS that I created here. I'm going to change down the camera speed. And we can see here, hey, I have lighting. Hey, that's cool. Oh hey, let's let's do that with more materials. Let's 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 get this whole scene looking looking pretty. Uh, and so this is that's it. That's that's it for my. Uh, <laughs> that's all the knowledge. Every single bit of knowledge conveyed in this immensely compact uh, tutorial. Um, yeah, there's there's more stuff about um, more stuff about exposure stuff. There's more um, shader stuff. There's more. How do I like texture paint? nicely how do i um like set like set up lightings for scenes how do like what's the philosophy on like your outside 
your outside lights should be much brighter. Uh, but I guess I've, I've rambled on enough now. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I guess I'm really just saying, haha, here's all this stuff that you missed out on. Um, wow, that sucks. Uh, sucks to suck. Uh, hold on. Oh my goodness. So new reference. I want this to be taking from, I want this to have shader one and I want this to be a new reference and texture coordinates and this to be texture coordinates one. Okay. I think that's it. Unless I'm forgetting something, add a new reference, change this to texture coordinate one, and change this to shader one. That might be it. Um, this needs currently doesn't have the correct settings. Um, I am not too concerned. This doesn't have the correct settings. The texture was loaded in incorrectly. I'm not too concerned either. Um, I'm just trying to get the what the light map looks like and show that off. And I think I forgot to... Goodness, I am all over the place. Can you hear the people outside? I don't know if you can. I don't think you can. But they they are being loud. This is what happens when you live in a dorm. I lived in a room, and then I moved across the hall, and now I'm back in the same room. I like I like I like dorms. Um, the fire alarms are cool too. We had a fire alarm the first day, the first day of classes. No, sorry, not the first day of classes. We had a fire alarm the first day of finals. Except it wasn't just a fire alarm; it was two fire alarms the first day of finals. That was a good night. Um, save. No, no clip. Drag, drop, furious. Change camera speed. Boom. That is really dark. <laughs> that is also really overexposed. Um, yeah, so I'm going to... Uh, and this is obviously really overexposed as well. Um, so this is this is where some of the lighting stuff is, which I am not a master at. Realistically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, I want my texture to be brighter. And uh, the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to multiply by two. Uh, not the not the best thing to do, but I'm gonna do it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to say, well, first I want to take the light map texture, so that's texture map one, and I want to, yeah, that's our texture color. I want to multiply it by two. Cool. And then I want to say, okay, now I have that. I have it. I uh, mapped to. I have it mapped to color zero. And then I want to take color zero multiplied by the texture color. Notice in this, we're not getting the raster colors in it as well. Um, and I want to multiply it by texture map zero. So texture map zero, we uh, now multiply by two at the end as well. And honestly, we just made the changes to the shader. We save it. And then we now should just be good to drag and drop the Burius in here and see how this, how this extra, yeah. See, now we're getting some of this green stuff which which is not correct. Um, that's that's from it being too overexposed. Now we're getting some really red stuff. And so this is why you you use actual text um, editors rather than not. Uh, and so it's a process of finding out what's the correct uh, yeah, what's the, what's the correct lighting um, configuration. Um, this is a um, looks like an artifact from not enough samples. That's my guess. Uh, at the very least, you can always just go and texture paint and correct that. I don't it before. Um, oh, I almost wonder if it's. Uh, I was wondering if it was like lighting from here or maybe there's some. What is this? I'm not sure. Oh, it's because ah yes. So this is getting lighting. This is this is what's happening. This is getting lighting. This had the the walls deleted here, and so it's now trying to interpolate between those. And getting some weird results, as uh, especially probably because the ah uh, yes I deleted this and then it doesn't know quite what's happening where uh, yeah so there's just some bad geometry stuff and low samples so that's that's a light map and oh our monkey our monkey never got the never got the light map oh the monkey needs the light map uh, monkey monkey add new reference shader one new reference texture coordinate one. 
I don't know if you guys heard, but my roommate just came in the room and then you left. Uh, oops, you weren't supposed to see that. I just doxed myself more. Um, don't pause the video there, whatever you do. Actually, I wonder if that is bad. Ah, yes, so this is a denoising thing. Uh, that's why it's really, um, <laughs> really noticeable. Uh, and these are artifacts of this light coming up and only hitting this face, and then it saying, well, actually, this is a shade flat moment. Uh, and I want these two faces to have stuff there. So this is where you'd go and you'd take that smear tool and you'd apply liberal use of it. Uh, and then you'd get the rest of this lighting first before you go back spending a lot of time manually fixing up this light map because there's not a lot of good options in terms of something this complicated with a lot of lights all right by it. Um, I mean, in increasing sample space, increasing geometry, but obviously the this is Mario Kart Wii and uh, there's limitations as to what it knows how to how to do. So that's, um, yeah, that's the tutorial. Uh, obviously this is not the world's best <laughs> best example of uh, a beautiful, oh, hey, that's, that's actually kind of cool. I like that. I like these colors, even though they're, they're horribly overexposed. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's a lighten up. Uh, that's how you do that. That's the process. That's how you texture paint. And uh, I am learning as, as I go to. Um, <laughs> which is which is the end goal isn't it it feels that feels like a parker square moment like i i gave it a shot and here's the tutorial long time in coming and uh you're welcome Ian man rezu and goodbye <laughs>